And now we're going to add something um, similar, although different in many ways, called refraction. So reflection was what? When the light bounces off. bounces off the surface. Refraction is when light travels through a surface okay, and bends in certain predictable ways. So refraction is the bending of light rays as they pass from one medium or one material to another. So obviously, if you have a transparent substance, okay, light can pass through it. That's the definition of transparent. But when light does that, and it goes from either uh, two, from one materials to another that have different densities, the light ray actually bends. Okay. And the way, the direction that it bends is dependent on which substance is more dense. Okay. The medium the light is traveling from or the medium is traveling into. So we call this the law of refraction. The law of refraction says, the first part is that when light passes from a less dense medium, to a more dense medium, the light rays bend toward the normal. Okay, so we have some ways, a couple mnemonic devices to help you remember this. Okay. So I'll give them to you in a second. But so here we have a light ray. This is the incoming light ray. Now obviously we have air and glass, which is less dense. The air. air obviously is less dense than glass. So this light ray is passing from a less dense material into a more dense material. So rather than just continuing on this straight path, it's going to be bent toward the normal. Okay? So rather than um, going through that, it's going to bend toward the normal. That red line shows the path the light would have taken. The black line shows the refraction of that light ray. Okay? Yeah? So is that why like when you look at a spoon from above, it looks like a spoon, but that's when you exactly, like, at that's, level, it's... That's exactly why. When you look at a spoon in a glass of water, it looks like it's separated, right? Yeah. Looks like where the spoon enters the water, where you see it in the water is actually uh, shifted over a little bit, and that is, that's because of refraction. So to help you um, remember, you can remember um, this law, LMT, which stands for Loud Mouth Teacher. Please, if you remember that, please just keep the teacher's name to yourself if you're thinking of a specific individual. Um, but if you remember Loud Mouth Teacher, you can remember when light goes from a less dense substance to a more dense substance, it bends toward the normal. What's that? <laughs> what did you say, Lindsay? It reminds me of you. Of me? Yeah. I'm not loud. Well, yeah, well, I'm yeah, not loud. Yeah. I'm quite soft spoken, I believe. That's how you talk, Eddie. I'm not loud. <laughs> Is that really? That's how loud I am? Yeah. I have to be loud so that my whole class can hear me. Mr. That's Mr. I don't need to know names. I don't want to hear any names. All right. You could probably guess what law number two says. Does anyone want to tell me what you think the second law of refraction is? Nicholas? Uh, when light passes from a more dense medium to a less dense medium, oh, dense medium mm -hmm. light ray bends away from the normal. That's it exactly. Oh. If we have, nice job, light <laughs> moving from a more dense substance into a less dense substance, rather than continuing on, it's going to bend away from the normal. So what does that mean? Like, if you put a light bend, oh, less yeah. bend like, like It depends on what light, which way the light is traveling. Yeah, if it travels from um, water into air, it bends in the opposite way. Oh, wait. So, again, to help you remember the law, you can remember the second law by remembering moms, large, asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Wait, what was it? Moms, large, asteroid. Oh, 
I'm just going to go back. I don't know why it's not that funny, but. Well, that was funny. Um, no, Mr. D. I'm slightly frozen. Yeah. Asteroid? Yes, asteroid. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's so go, funny. That's a good oh, one, Mr. D. It's go once the word. It has an aggy word in it. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Now he's calling me something. Mom's large asteroid. <laughs> that's what you said. That's it. That's what the lie is. <laughs> I would be a loud mouth teacher. So, so he admits to it. I guess I'm frozen. So let's finish this up. Um, there is a third part to the law of refraction that says if light is entering a medium. Yes. Okay. Um, at 90 degrees, it does not refract. So refraction only happens when light is entering a surface at an angle. If light is coming straight in, vertically, perpendicular to the surface, then it doesn't refract. So if it's coming on normal, normal. So yes. Okay. So when light enters medium at the normal or in the same direction, perpendicular to the surface, which is where the normal is, it does not refract. It just continues straight through the surface. What does that mean? No, because if it's coming in perpendicular, it just goes straight through. Now this, yes. Sir. And we're not talking about a mirror. We're talking about generally, math. Generally, we're talking here about lenses. Okay, this is where this is going to be most used. Is talking about lenses. And you guys saw the other day when we were doing the. Um, the reflection lab that in your little box of um, materials, there were also some lenses. Yeah. Okay? There were mirrors as well as lenses. Mirrors can help us to illustrate reflection. Lenses help us illustrate refraction. And so when light travels through, yes, we'll do a similar lab with refraction. So when light travels through a lens like this, okay, it's the shape of this lens that's important. Just like it's the shape of the mirror, Okay, that's important. So if we look at, this is a convex lens. You got bent outward. It's thicker in the middle okay, than it is um, at the ends. Okay. Um, a convex lens, where have you seen a convex lens? Sometimes. What else? Contacts. Contacts could be. A magnifying glass. You ever used a magnifying glass? That's a convex lens. It's thicker in the middle, and as you go to the edges of the magnifying glass, it gets narrower. A convex lens, such as this, magnifies the image. And it causes light rays to converge. So, causes, so as light rays come in, they converge to a central point. What do we call the point where they all meet? Yes, the focal point. Now, a convex lens such as this can create what we call a real and virtual images. What that means is a real image can be projected onto a screen. A virtual image cannot. If we look at this diagram, I know this is sort of an oval, but it's still thicker at the edges. It should make sense, if you think about refraction, why this type of lens converges light. If we imagine these light rays entering this lens. They're all coming parallel. Okay. If we look at this. So we'll probably unstick in a second. But what is you have to focus on is the normals. That's what's really important when you're looking at these lenses. So if you look at this top light ray, if you see this is the surface where this light ray meets, where would I be drawing the normal? So what direction, Michaela? Like this. Yes. It'd be like this. It'd be perpendicular to that surface. Okay.
Where would this normal be? Jax? Um, directly on the arrow. Directly on the arrow. It's flat right there. That's right there. And how about this normal? Ryan? Like going up, kind of like. Yeah, it'd be this way. Okay, I guess more shallow. Yes. And because of that, there we go. Okay. So draw the normals. What does the red indicate? Where it goes. No? Where it should, where it should go. go. Where, or where, it could where it would have gone if refraction were not happening. So if we think about this, now this is made of, let's say, glass, a glass lens. Where is there, uh, which is the less dense material? The air. The air. The air. Now this light would continue straight. All right. Why? So let's think about why this is happening first. So this light ray is coming in. Okay. Instead of continuing straight, it's going from less dense to more dense. Loud mouth teacher. It's going to bend which way? That way. Moves down. toward what? Well, it bends toward the normal, and so it shifts down. This light ray, which part of the law is in effect? Uh, the, the third part. Uh, it's perpendicular to the surface. It just continues straight. And this one, less dense, more dense. Again, instead of continuing, it bends toward the normal. No, it's still less dense to more dense. Right? And so it travels in. And they all converge at a central point. That is the focal point. If you've ever used, how could I suggest this? If you've ever used a magnifying glass, though, to burn a leaf, a magnifying glass is a convex lens. If you've ever done that, when, if you want to try and burn the leaf, what do you have to do to the light that's being refracted through the lens, Matthew? You have to make sure it's all in one tiny point. You make sure it's as small as possible. Now, what you should know is that where, it, how far away is that magnifying glass when you get that tiny point of light that's very, very hot? It's at the focal point. That's what you're doing. You're changing the, where the magnifying glass is in relation to the focal point. When you have it at the focal point now, the sun's rays that are coming into your lens are all being focused on this very, very small area, which obviously leads to it heating up very quickly. Yeah. All right, a concave lens. Now, a concave lens is shaped differently. A concave lens is uh, a lens that is thinner in the middle than it is at the edge, okay? And it minimizes an image, makes an image smaller. As light rays enter a concave lens, they diverge or spread out. Oh, sorry. Whoa, it's tension. And uh, a concave lens such as this can only form a virtual image, not an image that can be projected onto a screen. So again, the process is the same. As light comes in, okay, it's going to continue straight. It bends toward the normal, which in this case would be drawn in this direction. So it bends up. Here we have a concave lens. Again, the law that's in effect here is still loudmouth teacher. Okay? Less because we're, lenses are made of more dense material than the air. Okay? So again, loud mouth teacher, incoming light rays. In this case, where do all the normals point? Out. Um, inward. Uh, oh, yeah. Inward, in front of the uh, lens. Okay? And so instead of continuing straight, all of these light rays should be bending in which direction? Come shot? Toward the normal. And they do, they bend toward the normal. And they diverge them. Yeah, the middle one, this should be drawn straight. Start here. Wow.
Watch, hold on. Correct, it's gonna hurt me. Whoa. So here you have a laser showing light rays being refracted um, through a, a sphere Whoa. of the glass. I don't get it. Oh, it just you could see the light ray inside of that bending. Oh! Can you bend? So look, you can see the light ray as oh, you yeah. as it moves through. You can see this light ray that's inside. Because once it goes from this glass globe, when it leaves, what happens? As it's leaving, though, is it going to refract again? No. Yes. Yes. No. Yes, it is. Then it's going to be the situation of mom's large asteroid, and it's going to refract in the opposite way. That's what I'm talking about. This is an object in the sky. I think your mom will just show you still weird. Mr. Drew, go back or not? I don't want to. Why does my mom have an asteroid? It's just a saying to help you remember something. Wait! I think you guys are taking it the wrong way. Why? Really? I think you misinterpreted what I said. My mom got a certificate. All right, Nicholas. Do you have a question or are you just teaching? All right. Lindsay, you got this? Matt's mom's asteroid is. All right. Now, um, so many of us, myself included, have um, either near or far sightedness, difficulty seeing images that are close, objects that are close, or objects that are far. And if you look at this diagram here of the eye, okay, light enters our eyeball, right, through the cornea, the sort of front layer of our eye, um, and behind that is a lens, okay, a, what type of lens? Concave. Concave. Convex. Well, no. Concave. Both. It is a convex lens. I was, I said that. Because the job of this lens is to focus light where? Out. Into the eye. Does anyone know the name of the surface that the light is focused on? It's the retina. The retina of your eyes towards the back. Okay. And light comes in and focuses on the um, retina of your eye. And when it does, it gives you a clear image. If for some reason that image is out of focus. It means the focal point of your lens is not directing light on the focal point right onto your retina. It may be slightly in front of your retina or slightly behind. We use glasses and contact lenses to change that focal point and to change that light so that it does focus directly on our, excuse me, on our retina. Okay, and that's how glasses and contacts work. Now we may um, have difficulty seeing our eye could be too short so that light gets focused past our retina. Eyeball can be too long, causing light, the focal point, to be up here. And then glasses can adjust for that. So if we look at these slides, myopia, nearsightedness, is what I have. So you can see pretty well near, but you have difficulty seeing far away. And what happens in this is that um, the eyeball is elongated. So that as light travels through your lens of your eye, it gets focused somewhere up here rather than back here. Okay? So light rays converge in front of the retina. Now how do you correct this? Okay? You put a lens in front of that eye. Let me go back here. What you see is what kind of lens is being used? Concave. Concave lens. And again, it's making it so that these light rays diverge slightly. So rather than coming to a point right here, they diverge a little bit more, and that changes the focal point to where it should be, right on your retina. Okay? So, the more your prescription has, the more it's curved. Yeah, that's why, like me, I have really poor vision. And so my glasses, I'll wear my glasses like that. They're really thick. Like the edges are really thick because I have such poor vision. Because you need a thicker lens, okay, to make these adjustments. Because you need more bending of that light, so you need a thicker lens. Okay, so that's a concave. Yeah, I have. Context. I always almost wear context. Okay, the last one, the other type, hyperopia, farsightedness. Okay, this is when objects um, 
the left eye can be too narrow, too short. And so now light rays don't converge um, in front or on the retina, but they're, the focal point is behind the retina. And so how do you think we correct that? By a convex lens in front of the eye, which causes all those light rays to converge at a point that's right on the retina rather than behind it. This would be contact. No, that's a, a lens in the glass. Yes, you said? Can you have like both? What's that? Can you have like both your side? You could. Um, you could, and it's lots of times you'll have difficulty seeing near and far. What type of glasses would a person having that problem have to wear? Bifocals. It means two focal points. It means part of their glasses um, will allow them to see far, and the other part allows them to see near, and they just change their vision by looking through different parts of those glasses. Okay. If you have good vision, hold on one second. Then, okay, light rays focus directly 